Welcome to PaxX TV, your destination for passenger experience news. Let's look at the top stories that are affecting passengers today. After a high-profile hack attack of Lot Polish Airlines ground-based computer systems and a hacking claim from a security researcher on board a United Airlines aircraft, he claimed that he had hacked the IFE, the FAA has taken cybersecurity very, very seriously. It has issued guidance to operators of E-enabled aircraft, that's aircraft that are essentially connected from nose to tail, and also um, establish a task force of industry stakeholders and airlines. Now this task force must issue recommendations to fortify aircraft security in the wake of threats. Uh, the FAA tells PaxX TV that the first meeting was held in June in Seattle and the final recommendations are due in August 2016. The big aircraft seat squeezes on with airlines adding more seats than ever before thought possible. They're doing it in a variety of different ways, such as adding half galleys, for instance, which can mean reduced service for certain ultra-low-cost carriers, adding modular laboratories, that's right, smaller labs for us passengers, and of course they're adding ultra-slimline seats, which can equate to less leg room, and also on wide-body aircraft can mean that the actual physical seat doesn't have as much width as you're accustomed to. It's getting kind of uncomfortable in the back of the aircraft, as you know, all too well. Now, regulators are permitting these ultra-high density configurations, and they're allowing airframers to even recertify aircraft for more seats. But they're allowing this to happen with simulation testing of passenger evacuations. Now, that means that real-life passenger evacuations are not being used to test whether or not passengers can get out of that aircraft within a 90-second uh, time frame in the event of an accident. Some industry stakeholders are saying it's time for regulators to take a fresh look at egress testing in light of these ultra high density seating configurations. The aviation industry is starting to get a firmer idea of how the Internet of Things or IoT is going to play a role in reducing weather related delays and cancellations, improving operational efficiencies for airlines and even improving the passenger experience from an entertainment standpoint. Now sensors aboard aircraft are able to provide data to airlines that can be packaged and beamed to the pilots in real time to ensure that they can make informed decisions about that flight and get you to your destination on time. From an operational standpoint, crew are using connectivity to alert the ground that, for example, a maintenance issue has occurred or a part is needed. That means that by the time that aircraft hits the gate, the airline is ready with that needed part and can ensure a faster turnaround time. Of course, that's good news for any passenger waiting for a flight. The rollout of business class seats from American American Airlines Boeing 787 Twin Jets and Virgin Australia's Airbus A330s have been delayed due to certification issues. But these issues highlight a bigger concern in the aerospace supply chain, which is working around the clock to deliver seats, galleys and labs to Airbus and Boeing, which have increased production of their narrow body and wide body aircraft. Now what do these supply chain constraints mean to passengers? Why should we care? We're now going to go to John Walton, international aviation journalist who's joining us from London today to explain why we should care. Hi Mary. For passengers, it's really all about experiencing the same seats and the same cabins and the same entertainment systems that they've had for a while now. Airlines are being delayed in installing the new systems and the new seats that they really want to get out there for their passengers to enjoy. And in terms of the reasons why, I really think it's about two main areas of problem. The first is that there are way too few companies that are now producing this sort of product. There's been a lot of consolidation in the industry and that's really started to become a supply constraint. The second is that things are being innovated so quickly these days that in many ways there's just not enough time for companies to get their production lines in order. Now our correspondent Marianne Simpson is in Munich, Germany to check out LSG Skychef's mammoth airline catering facility. Marianne, take it away. For 20 years we've been building something. We began not with a blueprint, but with an idea to connect aircraft to the earth below. Today, 50,000 crew members are putting our new applications of connectivity to work. We're leveraging more than 5,000 GoGo equipped aircraft to connect not just passengers, but every aspect of our partners' operations. This is our vision for the next 20 years and beyond. This is Connected Aviation. 
Thanks, Mary. Airline food has long been the butt of a lot of jokes, but industry analysts predict that this sector is bound to grow to between 18 and 20 billion US dollars by the end of the decade. And that's no joke. Sheer passenger numbers are not the only driver behind the robust growth in this industry. Passengers increasingly have more disposable income. Uh, they are seeking out new experiences and they're willing to pay a little bit extra for that. And airlines in this competitive industry are very hungry to differentiate from their competition and pull ahead. And uh, onboard services like food and beverage are a surefire way to do that. Today we're here at the LSG Sky Chefs catering facility in Munich and the executive team here was kind enough to give Runway Girl Network total access to this 22,000 square meter production facility today so that we can take you guys behind the scenes and give you a little glimpse into how airline catering really works. Nobody gets into this high security facility without going through airport style security and getting a really good scrub. Food on the other hand, about 400 pallets of it to be exact from 200 different suppliers, comes through one of four receiving doors. Once it's through the door, it gets sorted, checked, sniffed, knocked, and with fruit even tested for sweetness value. Anything abnormal goes directly back to the supplier. Food that passes initial inspection is washed and taken to one of two kitchens, the hot kitchen where it becomes a hot meal or the cold kitchen where it becomes a salad or a dessert. At this stage in food preparation, hygiene is still extremely important, but gloves can't be worn at all times because a piece of latex could easily get chopped into some finely diced onions or could melt to a very hot frying pan or pot. Well-trained employees and automated processes help this unit put out around 50,000 meals every day. Food is not allowed to reach a temperature of above 12 degrees or be outside of a chiller for more than 45 minutes. So food temperature is monitored constantly and recorded in very well-kept logs. This airline catering unit and all airline catering units must be HACCP compliant. Now that is a strict and constantly evolving set of rules and guidelines to monitor food safety and handling. Overall, this unit gets audited about 15 times a year and for some airlines, they even take one sample of each meal that they produce and freeze it so that they can use it as a point of reference in the case of a complaint. Next we head over to the tray setting area where meal settings are assembled and loaded into newly cleaned airline trolleys. Just to give you an idea of the size of this particular part of the operation, we asked and discovered that there were 1,942 trolleys in the room just on the day that we visited and about 120 people actually work in this part of the unit. With about 300 aircraft to serve each and every day, it's really important this area stays hyper organized and that everybody works closely together. Loaded trolleys and catering boxes are then brought to the ramp and labeled carefully with flight information, contents and instructions telling staff which galley in the aircraft that trolley or box belongs to. The ramp has 41 doors and 65 LSG Sky Chefs catering trucks shuttle food, beverage, duty free and other supplies to waiting aircraft 24 hours a day. Right now I'm joined here by Oliver Bartelme. He is the managing director of LSG Sky Chefs Munich. Um, Oliver, your company has won the Platinum Award for Best Catering Facility Worldwide 2014. Uh, can you tell me who are Medina Quality who have created this award and why is it so important that you've won it? Uh, Medina is a company where I don't know how many airlines exactly, but uh, up to 30 airlines basically came together and decided that they get the, the, the contract to somebody else to audit catering mm -hmm. facilities. Um, participating airlines are Air Canada, Virgin Atlantic, um, uh, KLM, Korean Air, Singapore Airlines, so huge carriers in the world. And they basically get together to have an independent audit company to audit their catering facilities. In our business, we normally don't have contact to the end customers. If you are flying on an airline, I don't normally talk to you. I talk to the airline because our product only goes via the airline to the customer. Mm -hmm. So we kindly have the opportunity to get feedback also on this aspect if we do a good job. This might be a little bit of a no-brainer, but why is food safety so critical in this industry? It is the, and I really say the, preemptive business uh, thing that we have to do. If we don't uh, ensure that our food is safe on board, uh, we are dead within one day, to be very frank. Because... Um, especially on aircraft when people are flying between different time zones, uh, when they are away from home, when they are stressed, in the air where the air pressure is different to being on the ground. Mm -hmm. We have to ensure that the safety of the food, so the correctness of everything is okay, temperature-wise, um, what, how we cook things, everything needs to be on the highest standard. It is basically the highest standard in food safety worldwide. So no restaurant, no hotel that you find really? will have a higher food safety standard than we have in airline catering. 
That's really interesting. I think a lot of um, passengers would be surprised to hear that because I think that uh, food in aviation sometimes gets a bad rap. You know, people make jokes about it. And uh, why do you think that is? And what is LSG Sky Chefs doing to change that that idea? I hopefully think that uh, passengers are then speaking about economy class because I don't think that in business or first class there are any issues in all the airlines you travel worldwide. The, the food product on board is excellent. In, in today's world, the airlines have quite a high cost pressure. So they try to maximize the output um, for the people uh, which are flying in economy class. If they have to decide, normally the decision goes to a bigger portion so mm -hmm. that everybody is happy regarding the portion on board and the consistency of the food so that it looks the same equally on which airport you de depart and mm -hmm. even sitting to your neighbor, you don't want to have the food next to you uh, looking differently to what you get in economy class. So the decision is rather on this side of the, of the, of the chain then on the culinary excellence side. Mm -hmm. We are working already with some islands to, to, to upgrade even their economy class product, not necessarily combined with, with higher costs, but it's about creativity in the modern food trends and to follow some food trends in the modern world on the culinary excellence side. Thank you so much for your time today, Oliver. And thank you guys all at home for tuning into the first ever episode of PaxX TV. Make sure you check us out next month to see what we have in store for you. Thanks so much for joining us on PaxX TV. Join us next time for all the latest news on the passenger experience. <laughs>